Hi, I am the current New South Wales Visual Arts Syllabus. I haven't seen you around here before. Though you look like someone I vaguely used to know. Are you new? Hello. Yes, I am. I've heard of you before. Nice to finally meet you. I am the draft shape paper for the arts. I am only new to this area. I am finding it quite hard to fit in. Can I sit with you? Sure. So what brings you here? Well, hopefully I am going to be employed to provide all young Australians with the opportunity to imagine and creatively engage with all five art forms, music, dance, drama, media arts and visual arts, to develop their practice and aesthetic knowledge. If you are merging five art forms together into one subject area for the whole nation, are you not taking substance away from those subjects already strongly established in some states and pitting the arts against each other? Well, maybe, but some art forms have had a stronger presence than others within your curriculum. My creator John and I do not feel that this is fair to drama. Oops, I mean, the rest of the arts that are mainly offered as extracurricular activities. John told Philip Adams, the ABC radio presenter, that I am allowing for the crystallization of the arts. But what about everything that my curriculum and its teachers have worked for and effectively delivered over the years I have been implemented? Is your curriculum not just going to destroy that? John says that if you are afraid of me, it is only because you are frightened that you will be losing a little bit of your privilege and territory. Do you not think that that privilege is well earned? We had 29,000 year 10 students choosing visual arts as an elective, and 12,000 completing visual arts for the HSC this year in New South Wales. What will happen to them? Is there really that many interested in your subject? John did not tell me that. Well, it's not really that important. What is important is that drama. I mean, all the arts are available for young Australians to engage with. So how will the students gain knowledge through your curriculum? Because I have concepts, points of view and structures in place that assist my students in building conceptual practical and critical skills through art making and art critical and historical studies. My curriculum will teach the aesthetic knowledge of art making and of art works. Through generating, realizing and responding, students learn to comprehend art works. But what about art theory and conceptual development? What if the students were learning about Egyptian art or studying Jackson Pollock? How would they understand the concepts behind the artworks? They just experience them. Okay. Is that not just a participatory approach to the arts? No, it is not. So what do students study throughout their education? In years K to 2, children just play. And in years 3 to 8, wait. Don't you distinguish between those five years of schooling? where a child's developmental continuum advances, and their mental capacity and capabilities to understand and process art world meanings and concepts increases greatly, within the ages of 8 and 13. No. Not really. Anyway, in years 3 to 8, students play, explore and interrogate materials to make art works. Interrogate. Yes. Interrogate. Okay. They also learn through making and communicating with their artworks about the relationships that are present between the self, artworks, audience and world. Okay, but is that not similar to the conceptual framework from my syllabus? No, it is totally different. So what about the rest of their secondary education? In years 9 to 12, they learn to understand arts historical, theoretical, social and material contexts and interrogate their own artworks in contexts of these knowledge frameworks to produce bodies of work. How are they supposed to have an understanding of these contexts if they have not had the time or chance to study, examine or learn about them in depth throughout their previous schooling? Um. In my syllabus there is a strong emphasis on the development of students' intellectual and practical autonomy, reflective action, critical judgment and understanding of art and art making and in critical and historical studies of art.
My syllabus encourages students to become informed, interested and active citizens that participate and consume within the visual arts, through guided, effective teaching throughout the whole of their education. Oh? So if all you are doing is generating artworks, what sorts of artworks would you be doing? Artworks that have been formed through an imaginative impulse. So you think that artists produce artworks only through impulse? Not that they are influenced by the world around them, or are reacting to a position or are appropriating an already existing concept or artwork? Yes, pretty much. What about time allocations? In New South Wales schools I have a mandatory 100-hour course for years 7 and 8. And for elective courses we have 100 and 200 hours available for the visual arts. I think that 150 hours for years K-8 is enough. Does that not amount to 13.5 hours a year? Yes. Do you really think that is enough time to learn the required competence and concepts needed for the elective courses? Or their HSC? Yes, I do. Then what about your outcomes? Um, I don't have any. Really? Well, I have a series of art making and art critical and historical outcomes that cover the concepts of practice, the conceptual framework, the frames, representation, conceptual strength and meaning and resolution. They have been designed to ensure the students develop their knowledge, understanding and skills in making artworks and that they are able to critically and historically interpret art. Oh. Well. I don't need outcomes, because all the students who take part in my syllabus are creative beings that don't need to be told what to focus on to produce artworks, because they are able to generate artworks through their expressive or imaginative impulses. Oh. I give up.